Eritrea, in the Horn of Africa, is a country coming to terms with peace after a bitter war of independence. With a fragile economy and an unforgiving climate, this is a country struggling to produce enough food to feed its own people. But hope for the future now lies in a plant that can grow in seawater and a Japanese-American who's devoting his life to helping this country back on its feet. The story of Eritrea's struggle for independence is one of the most remarkable in modern history. As a former Italian colony, Eritrea was supposed to coexist as part of a federation with Ethiopia in 1952. But anxious to secure access to the Red Sea, the Ethiopians began what was effectively a military occupation, dissolving the Eritrean parliament, abolishing the free press, and forbidding indigenous languages in schools. In 1962, the Eritrean people began a guerrilla war against the occupation by Ethiopia, a nation ten times its size, backed by the world's superpowers. By the late 1980s, as the fighting intensified, the region was hit by a famine. This attracted the world's media and a Japanese-American scientist called Gordon Sato, who was anxious to see if he could help alleviate the appalling suffering he'd seen on television. I came here in 1987 because of the uh, Ethiopian famine. I looked into the matter and found it was mostly Eritrean famine because the central government was starving out the rebels. So I went into the field through the Sudan and found the fighters, the EPLF, the Eritrean People's Liberation Front, and I was greatly impressed with them. They were marvelous, dedicated, principled people, sacrificing everything for the liberation of their country. Whilst continuing his distinguished career as a cell biologist in America, Sato began using his scientific knowledge to help the Eritreans in their fight for independence. With money he raised abroad, he set up projects that grew much needed food to improve their diet and help the victims of this bloody conflict. My idea was to grow fish in the desert. And we did that. We dug ponds and we filled them with seawater. We threw in fertilizer and uh, threw in mullet fingerlings. And the fertilizer made algae grow and the mullet ate the algae and then the people ate the mullet. And in this way, we were able to provide high protein food for the wounded. Sato spent much of the next six years living and working alongside the Eritreans a close bond of mutual respect developed, fueled by Sato's determination to help a people whose right to freedom had been violated and whose plight had been largely ignored by the international community. The treatment of Eritreans by Ethiopians is just unjust, all right? And um, I guess injustice rankles me, all right? Uh, I would say maybe in part because of my early childhood experience. As the son of a Japanese immigrant living in America, Sato had experienced persecution himself. When Japan joined the Second World War, he and thousands of other American citizens were rounded up and confined to a notorious internment camp in the Californian desert called Manzanar. A sense of injustice has stayed with Sato throughout his life. To this day, uh... I call a project, uh, the Manzanar Project, in, uh, because I want to uh, memorialize Manzanar. Uh, I like to show that, uh, you know, we weren't um, people to throw in the garbage dump. We were people of value. Uh, and I think the effect on me must have been very great without me really realizing it, because I've almost from the start, I decided this is the Manzanar Project. The war in Eritrea ended with victory in 1991, but the conflict had left the country and the economy in ruin. With a harsh climate and few natural resources, the Eritreans would need all the ingenuity that had defined their guerrilla war to help them rebuild the country. Away from the mountainous interior, 
Sato's work took on a new significance. When the war ended, what I hoped to do was contribute to the economic development of this country. And I realized that this is a country with, that is resource poor. And therefore, we had to find new ways of creating uh, wealth. But what it has is a huge expanse of desert. And it has sunshine and the sea. And it's these things that we hope to exploit. And that's why we developed the idea of growing plants with seawater. Sato was confident he could use the sea to grow fodder for animals and produce meat to feed the country that way. What he needed was a plant that was both nutritious and able to grow in salt water. The first time I saw mangroves was when I came to Eritrea. And I guess I just looked at them and thought about it. And then I observed camels chomping on mangroves uh, so I figured if a camel can do it, a goat and a sheep and a cow can do it. Sato discovered that mangrove leaves are rich in protein, making them ideal for cattle fodder. But as mangroves grow on the coastal flats, these leaves fall into the sea and are literally washed away. 